You know, there's a lot of negativity going around Montreal Canadiens fans and their overall discourse at the moment. So I wanted to take some time in this video to discuss something that's a lot more positive. This is cool. This is a nice little tidbit based off of some of the things that we have seen. Today we're talking about the most underrated Montreal Canadiens trade in the wild. And I'm going to say in a while because I don't really know if I want to say in the past few years or whatever because there are certainly some other really nice Canadians trades out there. But just from the way things are looking right now, I love how this trade looks. In fact, there are two trades that we're kind of highlighting here before we get over and actually discuss what those are, though. Thank you to those in the recent Canadians video about Jonathan Drouin, who commented Zach Fucali. If you want a chance to be featured in the next Habs video, then please stick around to the end for the comment section keyword, and you will be given that opportunity. So, who exactly are we talking about here, and what exactly is this trade that I'm hinting at that is one of the most underrated Canadians trades that we have seen recently? Well, it involves a guy who was taken from the Buffalo Sabres, a guy who was eventually sent over to the St. Louis Blues, and a guy who wasn't really that big of a deal when he was here, we're talking about Marco Scandella. Now, this specifically is not the trade that I'm highlighting as the most underrated trade, but it is a part of it. When the Montreal Canadiens acquired Marco Scandella from the Buffalo Sabres, they sent over a fourth-round pick. Eventually, they sent Scandella a few weeks later to the St. Louis Blues in exchange for a 2020 second and a 2021 fourth. Now, the fourth was conditional. The condition was fulfilled when the St. Louis Blues re-signed Marco Scandella on April 2020, but the second-round pick that the Montreal Canadiens acquired was the 57th overall pick at the 2020 draft. This pick was not actually used by Montreal because instead the Canadians traded away this pick from St. Louis to the Tampa Bay Lightning. Now, what did they get in return for this second round pick? They got themselves what was a 2024 and a 2021 second. So essentially, the Habs traded away the 57th overall pick in the 2020 draft for what was the Tampa Bay 4th, which was 124th overall, plus another second. And if we take a look at who exactly the players are involved in these trades today, I think there's a good case to make that this trade right here was a very, very good one for the Montreal Canadiens. Because the Tampa Bay Lightning with the 57th overall pick chose a guy named Jack Finley, whom, if you're keeping up with the WHL and their prospects, you would know is a very big boy. Six foot five, 223 pounds, at 18 years old as a right-handed center, just under a point per game for the Spokane Chiefs. A very big improvement production-wise from what he had two years ago when he had 19 points in 63 games played. This season, he's done nothing. I mean, he's played two games in the Syracuse Crunch system, but aside from that, it's zeros all around, but that's fine. And personally, if I've learned anything, it's to not doubt the Tampa Bay Lightning scouting system when they get WHL players. But with the Montreal Canadiens acquired in this trade where they eventually sent over the draft pick that became Jack Finley, of course, it was that 2021 second that is yet to be used, but they also had that fourth. And with that fourth round pick, 124th overall, the Montreal Canadiens acquired a guy with the name of Sean Farrell. Sean Farrell is an undersized forward with elite playmaking ability. He has come into his own this year, and he's an adept passer and finds teammates in dangerous areas on offense. He's just so darn smart and creative with the puck on his stick, and he's not afraid to try highly difficult passing plays either, according to the EP 2020 draft guide. Sean Farrell is 19 years old, 5'9", 174 pounds, he's a left winger playing in the USHL, and this season, in the Chicago Steel system, he posted up a whopping 94 points in 51 games played. Way over an assist a game. Take a look at how exactly this guy was able to perform in the past 20 years of USHL competition, take a look at the points per game. He is literally the highest guy on here that is not a US NTTP player like Jack Hughes, Turcotte, Austin Matthews, and Jack Eichel were, and by far the highest guy here when you take a look at the games played. These guys, Tyler Barnes, Justin Kloos, Alec Mahalik, only had one or two games played, so I don't really think they count. But Sean Farrell has legitimately been the best player out of the USHL in the past 20 years, even overtaking guys like, for example, Thomas Vanek, who is a very good NHL player. 
even the guys on the US NTDB system whom Farrell outproduced, like Clayton Keller, like Farabee, and like Boldy. Sure, I know the age range isn't the same here, but still, amongst USHL competition, disregarding age entirely, Sean Farrell's 2020-2021 was absolutely exquisite. And there's a reason why Cole Caulfield came out here and said that this guy was going to be a steal of a pick when the Montreal Canadiens snagged him up. He's the kind of guy whom, if you like how Paul Byron plays, you like how Gallagher plays, you love that intensity, Sean Farrell's got that, and his playmaking and puck handling skills are absolutely exquisite. Creativity runs high in Sean Farrell's blood, this guy knows how to make plays, and he was above and beyond the best player in the USHL this season. Now, I will say... The most productive players in the entire league this year were all from his Chicago Steel team, and I do think that a lot of the production shared between the four guys up here kind of had to do with the fact that they were playing with each other. But still, Sean Farrell being the guy who runs the boat here, warming up the bus, hey, that's a pretty good thing if I do say so myself. And the entire reason why I'm saying this is an underrated trade is because the Montreal Canadiens essentially acquired Sean Farrell and another second round pick for a second round pick. Don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to use this as an opportunity to disrespect Jack Finley as a prospect for the Lightning. As I said, those guys just have absolute titan serum when it comes to being able to find guys in the WHL, especially in the mid-rounds. But if you're in a position to tell me, okay, you're building a hockey team from scratch here, who would you rather have on your team? A six foot five Jack Finley just under a point per game in the WHL or Sean Farrell, a guy who was around this same mark last year, but who absolutely exploded into becoming the best offensive producer not on the NTDP in the USHL in the past 20 years. Sure, Finley's a great prospect, as I said, there's some really good redeemable qualities to his game as well, but if you can put yourself in a position to get a guy like Farrell and acquire a draft pick that would be used to select another player next year in what is essentially a weaker draft, I will admit, but also in the second round, hey, Mark Bergevin, great pickup right there. This is the whole philosophy when it comes to acquiring draft picks and making these small supplementary moves. On paper, it doesn't look like a big deal at all. The 57th overall pick for 124 and a second next year, that's not that big of a deal. But if the Tampa Bay Lightning really saw a player in Jack Finley whom they valued so much to the extent that they would be willing to sacrifice a fourth round pick in order to get that, then hey, the Canadians took advantage of that. Firstly, by getting the pick, yes, but secondly, by using that pick to acquire a guy that I have absolutely no idea how he was even available in the fourth round. A guy in Sean Farrell who just based off of the statistical progression, this guy could have been a top 60 pick in the 2020 NHL entry draft. This guy could have been the player taken at that spot where Jack Finley was eventually acquired. And now going over to Harvard, where they actually have a pretty good track record in developing smaller guys. Take a look at what they did last year. Their top point producer, Aprazizi, is also 5'9". You also have 5'11", Jack Rathbone, a few other guys thrown in there as well. Harvard knows how to work with smaller players. And sure, even though they might not be playing in the best division, Harvard is still Harvard. You're going over there, you're getting your education, and you're playing high-level hockey. So, for Sean Farrell, I would not be surprised if this guy absolutely goes over to the NCAA as the best player the USHL has had individually in a very long time and just does his magic over there. The big questions, though, will be how exactly does he translate? We're seeing with Cole Caulfield right now that small players can thrive in the collegiate system, but the big question is, of course, what happens a year after that, two years after that, when Sean Farrell is 21 years old and wrapping up another season at the Harvard University Crimson System? What's going to happen then? Who knows? And how good is Jack Finley going to be? I know Finley is a very nice prospect in himself, but still, would I rather have Jack Finley or Sean Farrell and another second round pick? I'd rather go with the latter, and as a result, this Canadian's trade to me is one of the most underrated that we have seen just based off of the variables and what we're having to deal with with the prospects involved today. And I guess it all started with Marco Scandella, so thank you for your service, fellow Montreal guy. If you made it to the end of this video, comment down in the comment section below Sebastian Kohlberg for a chance to be featured in the next one, and you're like, oh, that's a weird one, why him? 
Yeah, he's a Canadiens guy who was drafted by the Habs in 2012, who was eventually traded to the New York Islanders to acquire Thomas Vanek. And because Vanek made an appearance in this video, hey, comment down in the comments the Habs guy whom the Canadiens traded to get Vanek for a chance to be featured in the next one. I hope you enjoyed this video. Rolls the 99. And bye.